podcast. It's March the 10th, 2024, and I uh, got a pretty good topic for you today. I actually got this idea from my mother. Um, I was on the con- on the phone having a conversation with her just a little bit ago, and uh, I was talking with her about something else. Um, <clears throat> we were actually talking about, uh, um, you know, the fact that we have to leave uh, again tomorrow and go back down to Charleston. Um, for any of you guys who are new to the channel um, or who have missed the videos last week, um, I went down to Charleston last Tuesday, um, or was it, I left on Monday, I think, and my procedure was on Tuesday, I believe. I can't remember exactly what day it was, but I went down there to have my procedure, and I completely forgot to take my, um, my Lovenox. I was supposed to bridge, so I take Eliquis every single day, and I take it twice a day, which is an anticoagulant, and um, it, the, the Eliquis can stay in your body for up to three days. So what they want you to do before a procedure is they want you to come off of the Eliquis and then they want you to bridge, which means you're just switching over to another short-acting blood thinner. Uh, it doesn't work as long as the Eliquis does. And they bridge me over to this other drug called Lovenox, which is an injectable. Um, I don't know if they make it in an oral form or not, but uh, the, the type excuse me, that I'm taking is um, a 60 milligram uh, shot and I have to give myself two injections a day uh, once every 12 hours so I'll do it like 7 a.m. and then it's 7 p.m. in the afternoon or evening but uh <clears throat> like I said I, I, I totally dropped the ball and forgot to take my Lovenox um, and I let the doctor know and he said absolutely not we're not doing the procedure it's too risky and you're gonna have to come back um, and I got a hold of his nurse, rescheduled my appointment. So my next appointment is this Tuesday, and I was very lucky to get that um, <clears throat> to get that appointment as soon as I did. Uh, but I, we're leaving tomorrow afternoon to go back down there, and we got a hotel room. Um, to we were going to leave early in the morning um, on Tuesday and go down there, uh, but we we are going to stay. And I do want to say uh, that one of the subscribers um, actually sent me a message and said that they wanted to help us out uh, with the hotel room. And I'm not going to say their name, um, but I do want to say thank you to that person. Um, thank you so much. Uh, they, they donated enough money for me to get a room um, in Charleston for tomorrow night because you know, they didn't want us to have to drive early in the morning. We had already paid for the room for last week. Uh, you know, we were, and I'm going to be honest, we were just trying to save money to go back. We were going to leave early in the morning instead of getting another room. But... Thanks to that uh, subscriber that donated that money to me. Um, you know, we got another room down there and we're staying again uh, tomorrow night. And we're not going to get down there until really late tomorrow. We're not leaving uh, town until like 5 p.m. But at least we don't have to wake up and leave at 3 a.m. to get there on time. Uh, we will get down there probably like 8 o'clock um, at night. Uh, but we're going to stay, you know, probably have dinner and then, uh, you know, we can get up at like 6 a.m. and then get to the hospital in time for my procedure. So that's saving us a lot of headaches. So thank you so much to, to uh, that individual that donated. I'm not going to say their name. I didn't ask their permission to say so. I don't know if they'd be comfortable with that. If they are comfortable with it, um, let me know and um, I'd be happy to say your name. But I, I just don't want to say who they are without talking with them first. But once again, you know who you are, and thank you so much. I really do appreciate it more than you'll ever know. Um, also, before we get into today's video, I do want to talk about there is a subscriber to this channel who has started his own YouTube channel, and his name is Sober Slayer. Uh, Sober Slayer started his channel uh, not too long ago, and he actually uh, came in the comments a while back and told me he was actually going to start his own YouTube channel. And um, here just recently, he let me know that he's uh, got his channel going. He's got some videos up on there. So if you would like to check his channel out, and I would highly suggest you do so, go to the comments from yesterday's video and just scroll through until you see Sober Slayer. You can click on his name and it'll take you to his channel. And uh, I think he's got like five or six videos up there right now. So go check him out and, you know... My thing is, is that anybody that's talking about this topic and trying to spread awareness about alcohol and the dangers of it is, uh, you know, it's all a plus to me. And, um, you know, anybody else that's trying to help get the awareness out there, you know, is okay in my book. And, you know, please go check him out. Uh, I really would like for you guys to do so. You know, I, he's got some good topics on there. And uh, 
You know, the thing is, he might talk about something that I haven't talked about yet. So, go check him out. Um, but with that said, uh, I also want to touch on one more thing. Um, as a matter of fact, I'm going to touch on that at the end of the video. Um, I don't want to keep going and all this other stuff, but I'll get to that at the end of the video. Let's go ahead and talk about what we're going to talk about today. So, what I want to talk about today is, and this is actually my mom's idea, and she, uh, this is a really good one, and I never really even thought about this, but, um, you know, I've talked about this. My mom was a nurse uh, for 30 years. Um, she was an RN, and uh, when I was on the phone with her, I was like, you know, I'm kind of struggling trying to come up with a topic for today, and um, I did have another topic I was going to discuss, um, but... Uh, when we were talking about this, I, I really <clears throat> thought that her idea was a really good one. Um, and like I said, it's something I never would have really even considered. Um, but after she's told it to me, uh, I started thinking about it. I'm like, yeah, this, this does really uh, hold some weight to it. And what she was talking about is, um, is that when she was a nurse and when she worked in the hospital, that um, there, a lot of times people would come into the hospital and they would, you know, when they first have a patient come in, uh, you know, they, they get their medical history from them and they ask them a whole bunch of questions. You, I'm sure that any of you guys that have ever, you know, gone to a doctor or hospital or anything like that, you know, there's a whole slew of questions that they ask you. And one of the questions that they do ask is that, have you ever abused alcohol and or drugs? And, or have you ever had a substance abuse problem or something like that in that nature? And uh, my mom was saying that a lot of times that when people come to the hospital that they'll say that they don't drink. And uh, reason being is, is that people think that um, if they're not drinking hard liquor, they're not actually drinking. Uh, and she said a lot of people will come in there and say, you know, they'll ask the patient, um, you know, do you drink? And they'll tell them, no, I don't. And you know, later on down the road, uh, you know, they'll find out, well, this guy's got, uh, you know, cirrhosis of the liver or pancreatitis or some kind of alcohol related disease or, you know, some kind of health related problem that comes along with alcohol. And they're like, well, this isn't at matching up. You know, if you, uh, if you don't drink, how are you ending up with these problems? And then, you know, after doing a little bit more investigation and a little bit more pulling on that patient, uh, they finally get the information out and the patient will tell them, well, yeah, I mean, I don't drink, I just drink beer. And, uh, she said also on top of that, not only will they say that they don't drink and they think that they're not drinking because they only drink beer, but the same thing that goes with wine as well, that patients will say that. And they also will also tell them, you know, I only drink a couple beers a day, but then come to find out, you know, they're drinking a, a 12 pack or a case of beer, 18 pack of beer every single day. So the point of today's video is that, um, and, and, you know, this is coming from a mom who, you know, worked in a hospital for many, many years is, uh, you know, it's very important um, when you do end up, if you ever have to go to a hospital or to a doctor, to be completely honest with them about your, one, your alcohol consumption, how much you're actually drinking on a daily basis, if on a daily basis or a weekly basis or whatever it may be. It's very important for them to know that type of information. They need to know your, your history with alcohol and or drugs. They need to know this, these types of things. Um, it helps them to diagnose. It helps them know what medications to give you. It helps them know, uh, do they need to maybe put you through a medical detox? Um, there's all kinds of things that come along with it, that reasons why they need to know it. And if you do end up in the hospital, doctor, please be honest and tell them exactly how much you're drinking. It's very crucial that you do so. I know it can be really embarrassing and uh, it's not something that you want to tell them. Trust me, I know. Um, I didn't feel that comfortable telling the doctor that I was drinking, you know, a half gallon of vodka every two days. But I felt like it was important, and I told him the truth, and I told him how much I was drinking. And, I, and like I said, I wasn't just drinking a half gallon of vodka. I was also drinking beer, shots of Fireball, all kinds of stuff like that as well. I really don't really know how much I drank. I just know I drank a lot. And I know that I did drink uh, a half gallon at least every two days. I mean, I know that for a fact. Um, but I was put drinking other stuff in the mix. You know, I would do wine tastings and stuff. So there's just really no telling how much alcohol I consumed on a daily basis. I just don't know. Um, but I just, I just know it was a lot, but I did tell my doctor that. And, um, 
you know, being completely honest with your doctor is just very important. And um, also, uh, you know, letting your doctor know that when you are drinking, um, you know, don't mistake the fact that uh, if you're not drinking liquor, uh, that, you know, drinking beer is the same and drinking wine is the same or drinking any other kind of alcoholic beverage. It's all the same. When we drink alcohol, uh, it all turns into the same thing when it's processed in the body. And it turns into uh, acetaldehyde, I think is how it's pronounced. As as acetaldehyde, acetaldehyde, I think, or acetaldehyde. Anyway, you get my point. <laughs> I'm sorry that I'm, I'm tearing this word up, but... It, it all turns into that when it's processed by the liver. It doesn't matter what kind of alcohol it is. It, it could be beer, it could be wine, it could be hard liquor, it could be uh, sweet tea, booze, or you know spiked lemonades, or whatever it may be. Um, if it's alcohol, it all turns into the same thing when it's digested um, in our body and our liver breaks it down. So it doesn't matter what it is. Now, uh, is hard liquor, uh, you know, going to get you drunk faster? Absolutely it will. Um, you know, when you're looking at alcohol percentages, of course, and like I was just talking about in yesterday's video, um, you know, the amount of alcohol that you drink in a, in a matter of time, uh, the, high, the quicker that you get your BAC levels up, um, it, you know, tends to, to correlate with blacking out. So... You know, if you're drinking three liquor drinks really fast in a matter of an hour, opposed to drinking three beers, well, your chances of blacking out are going to be much higher drinking the liquor opposed to drinking the beer. So there is a difference there. Um, and there is definitely a difference in uh, the feeling that you get with different alcohols. Um, I know, like, when I would ever, whenever I would drink, like, red wine, and I'm sure a lot of you guys can, um, can relate to what I'm going to say here, but, you know, like, when I would drink red wine, I would get like this really warm feeling all over my body. Uh, it would tend to make me kind of giggly and happy. My face would get really red. Um, and then if I drank beer, uh, you know, I would feel a little bit more relaxed. And I don't know if that had something to do with the hops that were in the alcohol as well. Uh, but beer tended to just really relax me. It kind of just chilled me out a lot more. Um, I never, uh, towards the end of my drinking, I just could not get drunk off of beer at all. Um, and I, and, and wine too, I just, you know, wine and beer just didn't do it for me. I had to drink hard liquor, but, you know, and talking about hard liquor, uh, hard liquor would definitely get you drunk really, really fast, especially if you're drinking it quickly. Um, you know, and it depends on the type of liquor you're drinking as well. You know, you, if you're drinking a liqueur, uh, or if you're drinking a hard liquor, you know, there's a huge difference between, uh, something like a coffee liqueur or drinking just straight pure vodka, um, or drinking something like Everclear or Moonshine or something like that. Um, you know, the liqueurs have a lot of sugar in them, and the alcohol percentages are a whole lot less. Uh, but if you're drinking something like bourbon or vodka or tequila or something like that, that's going to raise your BAC really fast, and, you know, and that's going to you know definitely correlate with your blacking out. But at the end of the day, when you ingest, whatever type of alcohol that it is, it doesn't matter. It all turns into that acetaldehyde or however you pronounce it. Um, and it still is going to damage your body. Um, now, do I, I don't know if there's a difference in how much damage uh, you, that like, if you drink a case of beer opposed to drinking like a bottle of vodka, uh, I would imagine that the damage would probably be a little bit worse because you're drinking that hard liquor. And not just from a liver standpoint, but just by, uh, you know, when you're drinking straight vodka or something like that, I mean, it can be really hard on your stomach. Um, and I would imagine that, that, you know, that people who, uh, it, for myself included, because I drink tons of liquor, um, I'm sure it, it causes a lot more uh, GI issues um, opposed to like beer and stuff. But I could be completely wrong about that. But I just know, like, you know, you're drinking straight liquor. Uh, and that gets in your stomach. And I know, like, when I used to drink, it would burn really bad when I would drink it. And I would get that, like, burning feeling in my stomach. Um, I never got that when I drank beer. Um, I would get a little bit. I used to get stomach aches a lot when I would drink red wine um, and white wine as well. I didn't drink a lot of wine because it, it tended to give me stomach aches so much. 
Um, but I would imagine that like hard liquor opposed to to beer would be a little bit more detrimental on your on your system uh, than beer would be um, initially. Uh, but it's still at the end of the day when it gets processed to the liver. Um, you know, it's still going to cause damage no matter what, uh, it doesn't matter what kind of alcohol it is. Um, but I still would imagine that, you know, drinking hard liquor and large quantities of it, um, probably is going to be a little bit harder on your body than, uh, than, you know, beer or wine would be just because you can consume so much liquor, um, in a very short period of time. I would imagine too, and actually I wouldn't imagine this, uh, this has got to be true that, you know, uh, you know, drinking liquor opposed to drinking beer, you can get alcohol poisoning a heck of a lot faster uh, drinking liquor opposed to drinking beer. So there are differences there. Um, you know, you're if you sat down and tried to drink a bunch of beer, I mean, there's only but so much fluid that you can drink at one time. Um, you know, one shot equals one beer um, or a four ounce glass of wine. So, you know, each, each unit is different in size. Um, but uh, you know, at the end of the day, uh, if you're drinking, uh, you know, five shots opposed to five beers, you're, you're, those five beers are going to take you quite some time to get down unless you're really like slamming them or something like that. Um, you know, taking five shots is a heck of a lot easier to get down. Well, it would have been for me. I know some people just can't handle the liquor, but, uh, you know, taking five shots really quickly. I mean, you could do that in a matter of minutes. Um, but trying to get five beers down is probably going to take you at least a half an hour to an hour. I don't know. It just depends on how much you drink. So I would imagine that, the you know, that there is going to be a little bit more of a difference, uh, you know, comparatively for each, each alcohol, um, you know, how it can damage your body. Uh, but the, at the end of the day, they all get turned into the same thing. Uh, once your liver breaks it down and, um, you know, that is a poisonous chemical, uh, and it's a, a carcinogen, um, and it's, and, you know, it's just, it's just a, a bad chemical and, you know, it's one of the reasons this, that we end up with a hangover is because, you know, we end up with that in our body. And I think that ends up turning, it, it turns out acetaldehyde and then turns into acetate, uh, which also is a poisonous chemical as well. Um, and, you know, and that's part of the hangover, why you feel so sick, because you've, you know, you've got these chemicals in your body and you're trying to get rid of it. Um, but point of the video is for today is that please, when you go to the doctor or the hospital, be completely honest with them about the amount of alcohol that you're consuming. It's very important that you do so. And I just want everybody to know and to recognize the fact that alcohol is alcohol is alcohol. It doesn't matter what kind of alcohol you're drinking. Um, you know, if, if you're drinking hard liquor or you're drinking beer, you're still consuming alcohol. It doesn't matter. So, uh, you know, if you do go to a doctor or whatever, um, if you're only drinking beer, you are still consuming alcohol. Um, my mom said that it happened a lot, uh, that a lot of patients thought that, you know, that just because they drank beer that they weren't drinking. Um, but that's false and it doesn't matter if it's beer, wine, liquor, whatever it may be, it all gets uh, turned into the same exact chemical at the end of the day. So I just wanted to touch on that today, just kind of clarify that. And uh, like I said, my mom brought that up and I just thought that was, you know, something that'd be a really good topic to discuss today. Um, you know, for anybody out there, you know, that might end up having to go to a doctor and have something checked out. Um, <clears throat> you know, and another thing too, while I'm talking about this, I get a lot of questions from people uh, saying things like, you know, I'm getting pain in my liver, or my pain in my pancreas, and what do you think this is? Guys, if you're having pain in your liver or pain in your pancreas, um, it's time that you really need to go to a doctor and get that checked out. Please do so. Um, don't get on Google and start looking up, you know, what it might be, or, uh, you know, I, I'm not a doctor. I can't diagnose you, and especially... Um, you know, through a comment section on YouTube, I just, you know, and once again, I'm not a doctor. I wouldn't even, even attempt to try to diagnose something like that. Um, that's really something that you really want to go have looked at, um, you know, for a lot of reasons. And, you know, just one reason is you could potentially catch something early enough that it could be addressed. And the liver is a very resilient organ and it can be uh, reversed. The damage could can be reversed. 
Um, you know, once you've gotten to cirrhosis and fibrosis, uh, you know, there's no coming back from that. I've had a lot of people tell me that there is and there's a cure for cirrhosis and all this kind of stuff. I've yet to see anything like that. I've never had a doctor tell me that there's a cure for cirrhosis. If there is, it's new to me. Um, I, I don't know anything about it. Uh, but, you know, once again, if you are starting to have pain in these areas, please go get it checked out because you can reverse, like fatty liver can be reversed. And if you're aware of your health problem early enough, you can turn it around, uh, you know, stopping drinking, changing your diet. There's a lot of things that you can do. Uh, you might find out that you're pre-diabetic. You can turn that around and uh, you can reverse pre-diabetes, um, you know, and be before you become diabetic. There's just a lot of things that you can catch early enough that you can go ahead and dress it and you can go ahead and get it taken care of and maybe not let it get full-fledged into cirrhosis or whatever it may be or Maybe you have pancreatitis and you don't ever end up with chronic pancreatitis or whatever. So, like I said, be honest with your doctor. Tell them exactly how much you're drinking. Uh, you know, be aware that beer, wine, liquor, it's all the same uh, when we consume it. And um, I think that's pretty much it for today. I just wanted to touch on that topic. Uh, but the last but not least, um, I just wanted to touch on this really quick. And I usually would not do this. Um, but I, I, I just have to touch on this today. Um, this morning I got into the comment section and uh, was trying to finish replying to all the comments that I didn't get to yesterday. And in that process, I had gotten to, I don't know, maybe 10, 15 comments. And I finally got to one and I saw the same person and posted multiple comments over and over again. Um, this person said that I am lying about, uh, you know, my health, uh, that I'm, uh, basically making this all up in order to make money off of YouTube. Um, you know, just a whole bunch of nasty things. And look, if, if you think that I'm making this all up, then so be it. Uh, and you know, if that's the case, please just go somewhere else. You don't have to come to this channel. You don't have to watch these videos. There's no one forcing you to do so. Um, I don't understand what would be the meaning behind me making any of this up. There are so many other things that I could be doing videos about. And that's not what I'm here to do. I'm here to talk about alcoholism. I'm talking here to talk about addiction. And I talk about my health. And all the things I have going on with me. And I just don't know why I would... Uh, make any of this stuff up, lie about any of this. It just, it doesn't make any sense. And this person said that they knew who I was and their person knew who I was and uh, I'm lying and this and that. Well, you know, if that was the case, then I would have loved to for you to say who I am because at this point, nobody knows my name. And if that was the case, then why didn't you say my name? Uh, you had every opportunity to do so. And uh, if that was the case, then why didn't you say it? Um, that, that would have been your perfect opportunity to, to put me on blast and expose me for being a liar, um, which is just ridiculous. Uh, it makes no sense. You know, at the end of the day, I really wish that I was making this all up. Um, I wish I didn't have all these health problems that I have. Uh, this person said that I was... Um, uh, you know, making up the fact that I have this procedure coming up and no doctor would have me have this one procedure and then the other procedure and, uh, oh, and another thing that, <laughs> so now I'm sponsored by a company, um, because of the clothes that I wear, uh, it's just a brand of clothes. And they said that because I wear the same hat and shirt that are whatever this, this brand that I'm wearing that. Now I'm sponsored by this company. That makes absolutely no sense whatsoever. It's just a brand of clothes. <laughs> That's all it is. I, I don't I, I don't get it. But anyway, I just wanted to talk about that real fast and just say, hey guys, this I'm not making any of this up. This is all true. There's I mean, I, I really wish that I was, but it I'm not. And and I'm here to talk about alcoholism and addiction because I really do care and I don't want to see anybody else end up in the same shoes as me. Um, you know, and if you think that I'm here lying and I'm making all this up and this is all just a gimmick, well, you don't have to watch the videos. Um, 
you know, you can believe me or not. I mean, I just, I have no reason to lie. And, you know, my mom came on this channel. I interviewed her. Uh, that would mean that my mom sat there and lied about all the stuff that we talked about in the interview. Um, you know, this person saying that I'm selling merch now in order to, uh, I, I guess I think I'm going to get rich doing this. It makes no sense. And guys, thank you so much for hopping in there and, and you know, uh, saying what you said to you know, stick up for me. I really appreciate that. I don't want you guys to have to do that. I don't want y'all getting in any con confrontations or altercations or anything in there. Um, I got to say, you guys handled it very well, and I really appreciate it. Um, there wasn't any any nasty transfers of words or anything like that. You guys did a really good job of, you know, holding your composure and keeping it together. And you were very professional about the way you handled it. And I really appreciate it. But if you guys see any of that kind of stuff in there, please just let me know. Hit me up on Facebook or Instagram or something. Just send me a message and I'll go in there and take care of it. I removed that person from the comment section. Um, you know, I've ta I've said this uh, so many times that if you come to the comments, you want to be negative and say nasty things. I'm just gonna remove you, and uh, that's just it. I'm not gonna entertain it. I'm not gonna go in there and start this battle back and forth and doing all this stuff. I'm just not gonna do it. It's immature. I'm not gonna follow up with it. I'm not gonna. You're not gonna drag me down with you. I can promise you that's not gonna happen. Um, I d I refuse to do so, and I'm not gonna entertain that kind of negativity. Um, so if that's the kind of stuff that you want to come here and do, and, and you know who you are that decided to do that, and if you're watching this right now, you know, so be it, you know, the, say whatever you'd like to say, but I'm just going to remove your comments again. I, I, you know, there's just no point in that. And to say that I'm on here lying, you know, believe what you want. I mean, that, that's fine. I, I guess I went down to Charleston last week. Uh, filmed all that stuff. I made that all up. I pulled that information off the line. And I don't know. Uh, I was. I found myself laying in the hospital bed. I mean, I, I don't know what else other than providing you with all the paperwork that has my name and social security number and all that kind of stuff on it. And I'm not doing that. So, you know, whatever. Uh, I, I just feel like I just had to address this today because a lot of people, I'm sure, saw that and. I know that some of you got into the comments and actually replied to that individual. And uh, once again, I appreciate you guys doing so, but I really don't want y'all to get involved in any confrontations about that kind of stuff. It's ridiculous. That person does obviously doesn't know what they're talking about. And uh, it's just absolutely false and not true. Um, everything that I've told you guys is completely true. It's, I'm, I'm completely honest with you guys. I have no reason to lie about any of this stuff. I mean, absolutely none whatsoever. Um, but anyway, that's it for today, guys. I just wanted to talk about that real quick. Um, and I know that the majority of you, y'all been here since the beginning. You know what's going on. Um, you know, did I make up back in March when I filmed that first video and how I looked in that video? I mean, it just makes absolutely no sense whatsoever. I, I just don't know where this kind of stuff's coming from. I don't know why anybody would even say anything like that, but whatever. It's neither here nor there. Like I said, I'm not going to entertain it. If that's kind of nonsense you want to bring to the channel, I'm just going to go ahead and remove you. So, uh, that's it, guys. Sorry to end this on a negative note, but I just didn't want to start the video off with that. And um, I tried recording this video over and over and over. And, uh, and this is going to be my final take. And... Um, that's it for today. I love you guys so much. Thank you so much for everything. Thank, thank you so much for watching today's video. I really do appreciate it. Um, I will be filming tomorrow on the way down to Charleston. I'll film when we get to the hotel. Uh, I'll let you guys check that out. I'll film when I get to, uh, to the hospital on Tuesday morning. I'll film everything. I'll film after I wake up, just like I did the last time again, and let you see all that stuff. So... I'll be looking forward to getting all this stuff done. I'm looking forward to getting this procedure over and done with. I cannot wait for this to be done. And uh, I'll see you guys on the other side. I'll see you guys tomorrow. And I'm um, looking really looking forward to Tuesday just being over and done with. So, guys, see you tomorrow's video. I love you. Bye-bye.